Now, well, how yeah. how for you, you know, integrating back into into society out of that life, um, you yeah. know, do you kind of uh, get out of that second nature habit um, or that second nature mindset that you were in um, and, you know, kind of become a, a, a regular member of society again? What's that process been like? OK, well, first, the most important thing is to have support. I was very lucky. I'm, I'm not sure, John, if, if you had your whole family when you came back. Uh, I did. No, I, I still. I, okay. Well, yeah. that that does make it easier. Yeah. I had, you know, my mom and dad had me set up in in Florida. Where, you know, had a car waiting for me with a job. You know, uh, in a gym, which now I own a gym. Uh, and you know, that's that's a big a big thing. Plus, the ten years in, you you think and you think and you think and you read and you get smarter in other ways. And when you come out. It's back now to what we said before. I'm not that uh, recruitable. I mean, not that anybody's going to want to recruit me now that I, you know, I left. Well, let me and, let me stop you too. You left, but the three quarters of your family went in before you. Uh, yeah, went, yeah, a ton of and guys the, went in. So, the biggest, yeah, the, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing was when it came out about Greg. Greg, a hundred percent. That mocked me. I got called in a few times within the next few days. Uh, guys trying to not blame me, but say I had to know you had to be part of this, you know, because we were running around the streets like we had badges. And I didn't know. I, you know, I just figured this was what it is to do during the war, you know. And uh, uh, and then when I found out that uh, Alley Boy told me him and his father knew about Greg for 20 years, the light went over from my head that few days later. And when Ali said it to me, he turned white. He knew he made a mistake. Yeah. He knew he made a mistake telling me that. There's no, I think he did it because he wanted to feel like he wasn't outsmarted or how did they miss it? But he said those exact words, me and my father knew for 20 years and he was bad for 30. So there had to be something that happened along the way. And I found out through a lawyer later on, the actual thing that did happen. I'll tell you that in a minute. But I wanted to finish the thought, like when you get out and you get back in, you don't have the same pressures and the same. So every time I pull up to a car, I'm not expecting to get hit. Or when I walk out of my house, like John said before, now I walk out of my house like anybody else. It's not that something can happen to me, but it's not that 24 seven pressure. OK, so I blend back in. But that being said, and not to sound like I'm looking for trouble or I'm the toughest guy in the world because I'm not, I'm not going to be the easiest guy to hit if I'm ready. If I'm not ready, you know, anybody could get hit. But I'm not that easy to hit with a gun, with hands or anything. But when you have your guard down, anything can happen. Uh, so they have to be pretty careful and make sure they don't miss. You know, especially Florida, where we're allowed to shoot if we have to. But you know, but I'm I'm so out of that thought. But you know, uh, that's the, the honest, the as honest as I could get on that. I don't live the life right now, at day to day, like we did. So it's easier. I have a gym. I had clients. I was training people. Perfectly normal life. But there is that side of me that went through it. So I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think like, and John, you know, there's, there's gotta be a line of people they would want if they really do way before us. Oh, a hundred percent. Listen, I mean, by the time you get to me, I mean, come on. And plus what I, what I gave up, you know, a lot was the, the corruption and a lot of guys won their cases. Billy must love me. He walked yeah. out of there because I mean, when I started talking about Greg, the whole case, got blown up. I mean, remember the judge trying to shut me up when I said, how can I tell you what happened if I can't talk about Greg? I wasn't allowed to use his name right. and I kept bringing his name up because I couldn't. That's who told me, you know, what do you want me to tell you? You know? So there's a lot of strange ways of looking at it. Yeah. Now, so, quick question for you. I mean, were yeah. there any hints along the way that uh, Greg was bad or, um, you know, any signs when, when you were working with him? In hindsight, it's easy to say, well, how about that, that, and that? But when it's happening, and this is your role model, 
this is the guy that, you know, the consummate wise guy, you don't think, you know, but how did we get the, uh, the frequency, the, the top secret frequency that only the task force and the FBI had? He had it. So we were listening to that. We were going to try to get Billy at his house. And we had a couple of guys that he didn't know. They were going to dress as FBI agents. I'll never forget it. I, so this is great. He's not going to come out. He says, Billy will come out. He'll come out like a gentleman with FBI. He says, but how are we going to convince him? I mean, I, I made a comment. I said, we'll get cheap suits, but he's going to want to see a badge, credentials. He looked at me and said, I can get it. Yeah. Again, I never thought anything. Yeah. Well, you're still you a know? young guy when you first stay, when you kind of raised as a secondary father to you. You know, yeah. so you, you blindly yeah. follow him in. You think he's a tough right. guy, gangster, which he was a tough guy, and he was a gangster. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, he got yeah. shot in the eye. He, I mean, the guy was what he was still. Yeah, but so, you no know, it, it, there's yeah. no no uh, disgrace by you blindly following right. him. I mean, right. you get, he had an army yeah. of guys that blindly followed him, and, and rightfully right. so. He proved himself all over the street. Who would really think? Yet you're not right. thinking on those terms. There's no reason, no, real reason can't. to you, think on those you terms. You can't even You can't. Then you'll, you'll be a victim. Yeah. But we, I used to take him to uh, meetings in Mount Sinai Hospital. Now, I could sit down with him anywhere, with anybody, if the other person was okay with it. We'd always ask, you mind if Larry stays? Nine, nine times out of ten, they said yes. Council, yes, captains, you name it. And, but when I took him to the cafeteria at Mount Sinai Hospital, no wise guys are in there. Nobody goes to the hospital to eat. He goes in. Me and Jimmy had to wait outside. He says, wait here. I, and I remember being almost insulted. I said, all of a sudden, I can't go in. What did I do? You know? Right. But it, he was meeting them. Yeah. I found out later on, you know, that was right. one of the meeting places. Plus, we had the uh, the old shoe phone. Yeah. Remember those big phones? The sure. stock yeah. 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 So, and he used to call him on that and call him his girlfriend. And they got that phone. And we all got pinched. The feds got that phone. So they know exactly who he was talking to. Right. You know, so there was a lot, you know, uh, of things, like I said, in hindsight. But, you know, at the moment, I, even the first day when they approached me, I went after Vicarina because I couldn't stand for that. You call him my, my man a rat. Right. You know, uh, but the next day, the very next day, it hit the paper and they called me in again. It was him, Frankie Lesterino. And uh, Mike DeSantis, and I grew up with Mike, and uh, he was the one that sort of got in between and says, no, Larry, you got to just hear this. The first day, and then the second day, I saw his face was like he was sullen. He felt bad what I was going to be put through right now. And uh, I had to put my tail between my legs, and I was scratching my head. I walked away. I'll never forget it. But these feds, they know. Yeah. I moved away. I had to sit at another because I couldn't be near them. The next day, they sent me upstairs back to where I was with Alley Boy, Bobby Zambotti, and, and my guys. I don't know why they put me down there in the first place. Right. You know, they got everybody on set, and me and Vic could get together. You know, so they, they you know, they just got all those little. Well, tricks. they got the moves and chess moves. Yeah. And, you know. Yep. So now I go back with Alley Boy, and, and I'm, I'm just going back and forth with this. And it's, oh, you know, and then ultimately, like I said, it came out in the paper, and then Ali said what he said, and it just made me, you know, and I, I you know, make that call to the attorney. And, uh, you know, I remember my lawyer telling me, he says, I think you're a little late. You know, well, you're, you're actually you're, lucky that you got anybody yeah, at all. You're right. You're right. Because you're exactly your guy right because, is only, because they get very, they, uh, you know, you, you finish that. Yeah, Carmine says it. I know Carmine went in. Right. And the funny thing is, I, and Jimmy and I used to look at each other. Greg would give him details. I mean, of everything we did. And I'm wondering, why are we even talking about this in front of people? Right. You know, it's done, you know. And then we would go sit at a table and he'd tell Joe T, who was our acting boss, the story. So now there's like other guys sitting with Joe. And I never forget us saying, why is he giving all this detail? You know, why he had no concerns about anybody. So long story short, a few of the guys at the table flipped. Carmine was the first one in. Right. You know, Greg, he said they well, I know. I think Carmine flipped because he was in the middle on a spot there, I think. Right. Is that right? He, If he went one way, he was going to get killed on one side. If he went the other way. No, that was Greg. That was Greg earlier on. Carmine Sessa, uh, 
he he called for a meeting right. at St. Patrick's Cathedral. He was trying to he was trying to poll and see if what skippers were going to run. No, no, that was already done. This oh, was that way was, that oh, was okay. early on. All right. Yeah, this was way later. They were, he was ready to go on the lamp. He's telling them that this is the last meeting. I want to leave some instructions, okay. and then I'm going to you know I'm going to be gone for a while. And when they met, all of them got pinched, brought into, and Carmine was escorted in another direction. Oh, okay. So you can imagine how they felt going to that meeting. You being called in like that. Right, right. Yeah. What you said was right earlier on. Right. Okay. Earlier on, that was part of what started the whole thing. Uh, Vic that was a couple of years earlier, right? Didn't he ask? Yeah. Him? Yeah. yeah. Okay. To poll the captains, okay. right? And and that was right after uh, a, a big meeting. I went to Whitbread with Jimmy Angelini. You remember Jimmy Angelini? Yeah, sure. He was yeah. a consul, yeah. 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 And uh, he asked Greg. And I'll never forget that Greg didn't declare himself. And I was right. shocked. Yeah. Greg yeah. stood on the fence. Right. Right, right. And he's and they told me on the way what you just said. If he goes one way, Carmine's gotta kill him. If he uh Junior Persico, right. if he goes the other way, Vic's gotta kill him. They gotta get him out of the way one way or the other. And uh then they killed Jimmy. They put Carmine in that spot, they asked him to do the same thing. The same he thing. comes to see Greg, Greg busted out laughing. He says, yeah. You're gonna wind up like yeah, Jimmy. Right, right. That's Don't the story. Right. Don't you see yes. the play? Greg, yeah, so, Greg's yeah. Greg's Greg's yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Listen, that, yeah, then ultimately all the, the wheels get in motion, the war starts, and what you just said was at the very tail end when okay. everybody got pinched. I think I was already in, right. and I heard about that. Yeah, because yeah, I, actually I was with Mike Sesser in Otisville. But Gregory wound up spending fifteen years in the hole because between his father, did he do that much time in the hole? Fifteen I knew years, yeah. Time. I didn't realize Be between his, yeah about fifteen years between his father and uh, that situation, they couldn't release. Him. They said he's got too many enemies. And uh, finally, he wound up in a state joint later on. And uh, and part of the reason was when he was in the hole, you knew that story, right? Yeah. Uh, where he was with Nichols, the guy that tried to blow up the Oklahoma City building. Well, right. did blow it up. And, uh, you know, this this is this confuses me. You tell me you tell me where this makes Greg a bad junior, a bad guy. He's next to a terrorist. That's going to blow up the terrorists, right. kids, women and kids. He told the feds where the weapons were. Right. You know, if you're in, if he was in the street and he knew that, he could kill him. Right. Or you know, listen for that. It, honestly, he, need, he needs he needs to get pinned with the. Uh, in yeah, my yeah. opinion, yeah. I mean, you know, and yeah. I'm doing a show for women and kids and and yeah. change their life. So to me, right. for that he's a hero. I don't see anything right. different. I agree with no. you. The, you no know, matter where you are. Yeah, I don't care. Because anybody could have had their their wife or their children or their of relatives in, in, in a building or wherever that guy was going to blow up. So, you know, it, it, you yeah. know, he's supposed to be uh, looked at as a hero yeah. for that, not the other way yeah. around. So this judge tried to get him some time cut off, but the government right. kept appealing it. They'd appeal it, and he, he gave him 10 years, they took it away. Then he was working on his uh, compassionate release. Finally, the judge... They couldn't tell him no anymore. He exhausted all the remedies. It became his decision. And he had them let him out on a Friday because this way they couldn't appeal Saturday and Sunday. He'd already be out. And uh, anyway, so that's why he got labeled a little bit bad. But he did nothing wrong. He was he did his time like a champ. He, he was in a hole. You know, they added 33 years on top of his 20, and he didn't flip or anything. So, you know, yeah. but – he wasn't going to have an easy time because of the old man. No, so, right. That's never going to yeah. happen after his fault. No. So. Right, right. So. And Larry, I have a quick question for you. Do you ever, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, does part of you ever maybe miss it a little bit? The oh, life? Cool. There's parts of it, yeah. If I said no, you know, uh, it, this would be the Disney world of the mob. If we could have... Um, an equal group of guys that never want the head of the table. They don't want to be the boss. Just a circular table. We all sit around and we're all the same and we make money in gambling and we make money in the old rackets and we don't kill. It got too easy to kill. Yeah. It got too easy to kill. Like you look at gas pipe, not, you know, everybody was getting whacked. He had a dream about a guy being bad. He killed, him. you know, uh, our dear friend Sammy, whether it was John or Sammy, there were a lot of hits there. I mean, just yeah. too many, maybe. You know, our family, before the war, one hit after the other. You know, just for jockey and for position. It got too easy to kill. So 
I guess it says, I don't know if it's going to ever be done, but the, the money-making part of it, I don't miss. I love the gambling business. I still go to the track. I still, you know, uh, bet football legally, of course. Uh, but, you know, those are things that I miss, you know. Uh, the funny thing is, in some ways, I'm doing better now because the money I'm making now, I don't have to kick in anywhere. I'm not looking over my shoulder like I didn't give enough. Uh, I could spend it how I want. I don't have to worry about getting arrested or taxes, you know. So, and I still go into a restaurant. I'm still a good tipper, and I still get a lot of respect. I just people just know. And John, you may notice, or I, I, I think you have that in you. And I don't just say that, but from the people I talk to and see. Uh, there's another thing Greg once told me. When you're a true wise guy, you walk into a place and they'll just smell you. And I've had a few instances, and I know you did too, where you walk in, you just want to go off your own, sit down with your girl, your wife, whatever, and they just start pouring over you. They just, there's just something, you know, there. So I get some of that still, you know, not that I'm looking for it, but, you know, I guess you are what you are. Uh, well, you can't erase our past no matter what you want. Not anything. completely, and, right. And, and a lot of these people have a certain image of the life in us, and it's yes. not going to change, but the right. only thing we can do is doing what we do now. You're, you're moving forward with your life. Yeah. I'm trying to mm -hmm. pass a message to these kids about yeah. the treacherous part. I know they want to hear the stories, and we give it to them, yeah. but it's really about the treacherous part of this life to try to warn yeah. these kids away from wasting their lives like we did, uh, yeah. not being able to sleep at night because of right. some of the crimes that we saw yeah. and, and were involved with. Yeah. So well, I, I think that's really, yeah. you know, is it, and we all miss it a little bit, yeah. you know, because no, it's part of our life. It's part of our soul. Yeah. You're not going to ever get, lose yeah. that. No, and you made a good point, like where I brought up the money. I'm also saying that now I may not be making as much, but it's real, it's earned, and it's mine, and it's taxed. It's all more real. You know, you don't need that life to make a good living. Hey, you know, I don't want to cut you did. off, La. We got to go. We're out of time. No, but listen, I'm gonna, that's a I'm gonna, I'd love to get you back on and do another part. Yeah. And we want to talk more about what you're doing with Pelleggi and the rest of these guys. And uh, that'd be great. You know, he's, and for people that don't know, Pelleggi's uh, top notch in this field, especially. So, Goodfellas Casino, yeah, part great. of American right. Gangster, yeah. uh, uh, part of the. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street, along with Terry Winter, yep. who we're working with too. Yeah. So, how does how does so, somebody reach you now, Lav? We want to give the, the people that are listening. How do they get out and reach you? Get some of your well, books and some of the things. If, if, if they want the book, it's it's. I have a website www.larrymazza-thelife.com. Uh, you know, and I am on Facebook. I went on there a long time ago for marketing. <laughs> Sometimes I get addicted. I start fighting with people over politics, but. Uh, <laughs> Basically, I'm on there for marketing. And, and, uh, uh, yeah. And, and Johnny, we got to fit, you know, I got the number. I want to definitely exchange numbers with you. So yeah. not, we're not far apart. We can no, no, not, a, not at all. You and know? you know, all our friends are friends yeah. and whatever. So, yeah. and I yeah. missed you the last couple of times, but definitely yeah. off the air, we'll, we'll get back in touch with each other. All right, for and sure. We'll exchange. Perfect. Thank uh, you so much, really Larry. Appreciate it, Larry. Thank appreciate it. Professional, and I, I, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, brother. Bye. I'll Have see you. All right. Okay, man. You got it.